Okay. Now our next demo is what if we have a function f that is not linear? Okay. So remember, if we have a function f that is not uh, not a constant, what we have to do is to integrate this function within every interval, right? So, so let's give an example of, of if f is equal to, let's say, sine of pi x. So sine of pi x within 0 and 1 is going to be a sinusoidal function that goes up and down. And I constructed this such that we also are going to have an analytical solution, right? We also going to have an analytical solution that is actually equal to sine of x times a coefficient because the second order derivative of sine is actually minus pi square of sine, right? So we also have an analytical solution. And the bj in this case is going to be split into two parts, x, xj minus 1, so this is j, to xj of a solution that goes from 0 to 1, which means our, my x is going to be x minus xj minus 1 over xj minus xj minus 1. So that's the form of the phi j times sine of pi x dx plus uh, xj to xj plus 1. And the form of the function is going to be x minus xj over xj plus 1 minus xj, also times sine of pi x, dx. So let's see how do we construct this function. Yes? Uh, how did you know the form of uh, phi j? Uh, phi j? Oh, yeah. Phi j is these hat functions, right? These are phi 1, phi 2. Oh. So each function is 1 over here. Uh, it is 1 at a particular grid point and 0 at all other grid points. It's piecewise constant. All right. So this is also how we derived the form of AII and uh, AIJ. OK. So with this knowledge, we use Gauss quadrature to compute these integrals. So Gauss quadrature, uh, I have a function here, LGWT, that computes the quadrature points and weights of Gauss quadratures. Okay, so so let's uh, so for example, on the first interval, we can compute. We have x one and which is zero and x two. So let's use these two uh, grid points to compute. So so let's compute the Gauss quadrature points and weights within that interval. The way to use this is x and w. These are x is the location of the Gaussian quadrature points, and w are the weights. LGWT. And uh, first of all, we give a n, which is the number of quadrature points. In this case, let's try a quadrature points of five points. And a and b are the intervals, which we give it x1 and x2. OK. So it gives me the weight, uh, the x and the weights. So x, as you notice, are a set of numbers that lies within x0 and x1 and x2. So the maximum is uh, the maximum is 0 0.093, which is close to the right hand side of the interval, but not quite. The minimum is 0 0.046, it's close to zero, but not quite. All right, and the weights are a little bit larger in the middle than at the two ends. So is the spacing. The spacing is more sparse in the middle and more tight at the ends. All right. So this can be used to compute the uh, compute the integral over the first uh, the first interval. So so let's uh, let's do this. Let's do x left w left we are going to have a right uh, pretty soon because in order to compute the first entry of b we need to integrate over two intervals so okay we have the left uh, entries and how do we approximate the integral is the function we need to integrate this particular function 
at the grid points times the weight corresponding to the grid point and just sum over these five points. So let's compute uh, the number. Let's call it B of left, okay, is equal to the grid point x left minus x of 1 divide by x i plus 1, not i, so in this case x2 minus x1. This is the form of the basis function and times sine of pi times xl. xl are the Gauss quadrature grid points. And I multiply this value with the Gauss quadrature weights. Okay, so these are going to give me a five numbers, right? If I sum over the five numbers, this is going to give me the value of the function, uh, the value of the function, but the weights shouldn't be negative, so I must uh, give it, okay, so let me see. So in, uh, f of x is defined in a and b, uh, I simply evaluate it. So what did I do? I give it x a is x1 and uh, b is x2. So I must have. You already omitted uh, the original x vector that we had. We call the lg subject b such that. I see. Good point. Okay. So I should have x equal to. Okay. Let's do this again. Right, okay, now I have the original x, I can do this. So my weights are now positive and uh, uh, my xl is, is what I expect. So now let's compute b left is equal to the same number. It's, this is the integral of the function I wanted to integrate in the first interval. Okay, so I can also have my x right and w right being uh, the, the Gauss quadrature points and weights in the second interval. Okay, so this is my, my second interval. And uh, then I can also compute the, the right side of the quadrature, being summation of x right minus x2. Uh, this is actually, wait, it's xr. Uh, I, think, I think I made a mistake in, in here. Uh, what I needed actually is xi minus xi plus 1 because this basis function has to be 0 at xi plus 1, right? And there should be, uh, there also should be, should there be a minus sign? Yeah, there should be a minus sign here. So it's actually xi plus 1 minus x. So this is going to give me a 1 at x j and give me a zero at x j plus one right so it's it's a function that goes downwards okay so now let's compute this function x r should be uh, I should have x three minus x r divided by x three minus x two times sine of pi times x r times the w r Okay, so this is going to, going to give me the right side of this, uh, this, this B1, right? So, so I can have a B1 is going to be equal to B left plus B right. Of course, this only computes one entry. So let's do a loop of computing all these entries. So let's go for I goes from 1 to N minus 1. Okay. And uh, so what I'm going to compute is B left. B left is going to be, oh, sorry, I need to first uh, compute, uh, compute the quadrature weights. The quadrature weights on the left is going to be in between I and I plus 1, right? And my x right 
and W right should be the quadrature points between I plus 1 and uh, I plus 2, right? So these gives me the quadrature weights and my my integral on the left side of the uh, the, the, the grid point should be the value of the basis function should be xl minus xi divided by xi plus 1 minus xi. So this is the linear function that goes from 0 to 1 when x goes from xi to xi plus 1 times sine of pi times xl times wl. So this is correct, I think. Okay, and br is going to be equal to the summation of x now i plus 2, right? Because I'm looking at the interval on the right side of this, uh, this grid point. And uh, I have x i plus 2 minus x i plus 1. This is right. And my bi would be equal to bl plus br. All right. Okay. So now I have the complete B field. Let's do it again. Uh, U is equal to A inverse times B. So now I get my U again. Let's close my previous plot and plot this U again. Hmm. This time I uh, got something that is not as Good. So let's let's plot my analytical solution again. Uh, my u phi instead of equal to the to the quadratic, we have sine of x phi times pi divided by pi square. Okay, and uh, let's hold on and uh, plot my analytical solution to see how they match. Okay, so I don't really get what I uh, expected. Can we find a bug in the code I, I have in the for loop? Oh yes, I, I changed my x vector. I need to do redo the A matrix. Yeah, thank you. So so let's do this. Uh, my, my diagonal term is equal to, so let's, uh, Let's make a is equal to zeros this first. a is equal to a plus my diagonal terms and a is equal to a minus. Now I don't have these two times and uh, minus one. Okay, so that's my new a matrix. Yeah, okay, thanks. So let's do this again and uh, uh, this and uh, these are still correct. This is the correct main diagonal, right? So we get a matrix that yeah looks looks like have the properties we expect. Alright. So u is equal to a backslash b and uh, let's try to plot this time solution. Uh, let's plot it as what color? Let's plot it as uh, black. Okay, so now the black line matches the analytical solution a lot better, right? So let's let's close this again, and uh, so this is num numerical solution. This is analytical solution. Sorry, let me hold on uh, and plot the numerical solution again. So now my numerical solution uh, matches the analytical solution a lot better. So we have demonstrated how to use finite element to solve the Poisson's equation with zero bounded conditions, both for a, a trivial right-hand side and for a non-trivial right-hand side. All right. And Gauss quadrature with five points seems to be very good already in integrating um, a sinusoidal function times a linear function within each interval.